God is still on the throne, and prayer changes things. This is Brother Hutchings inviting the listeners to a, another Watchman on the Wall program of Southwest Radio Ministry. And here now is Brother Jerry. Thank you, Brother Hutchings. True Christianity is being buffeted on many fronts today. One of those is the New Age movement. Today and tomorrow, Dr. Larry Spargimino visits with former New Ager Warren Smith about one of the biggest pushes to uplift the old idea that's cloaked in new wrappings. He'll be talking about how TV personality Oprah Winfrey is promoting New Age thought. Brother Warren is a freelance writer. He's written extensively on the subject of spiritual deception since surrendering his life to Christ. Here now is Brother Larry and his guest, Warren Smith. Thank you, Brother Jerry, and greetings to our listeners. Brother Warren, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks, Larry. It's good to be with you. You know, Warren, it seems that Oprah Winfrey has been very busy lately introducing religious and spiritual ideas on her television program, her Oprah and Friends, the XM Satellite Radio program, and even on the Internet. Could you tell us a little bit from your perspective as a former New Ager what she is up to? Sure. For years, Oprah has been introducing particularly books and authors and giving them notoriety in in so doing. She's been doing that for years. A lot of people don't realize that there's been a real concerted effort to out the whole New Age philosophy that we're all one because we're all divine, because we're all God in Christ. But what's happened lately, Larry, at least what I've noticed, is in football they call it a blitz when they rush the quarterback. This is a blitz. Starting last year, particularly when she introduced The Secret with Rhonda Byrne, and then on her satellite radio program, uh, Oprah interviewed Esther Hicks. Esther Hicks was really the inspirational force behind The Secret. The Secret, of course, for listeners who aren't aware of that book, it's a book that basically tells you that uh, you can get what you want through your thinking, through your thoughts. They call it the law of attraction. What you think is what you get. If you think negative things, you get negative things. If you think positive things, you get positive things. And while there are some truths weaved into all this stuff, it's pretty much the old prosperity gospel. It hit the church. And the interesting thing is that for believers who are dealing with this book, I know that it's crept into hospital training programs. It's being used by businessmen. The bottom line is on page 164 where the author says, you are God in a physical body. That's the bottom line. There it is right there. You really don't want to have anything to do with this book. It's an occult book, but they're being presented as self-help books. So Oprah not only introduced this book on her TV program, but she interviewed Esther Hicks on her satellite radio program. And she did more than that. She interviewed Abraham, the out-of-body spirit that works through and channels through Esther Hicks. And Oprah, on that satellite radio program actually said to Esther, I couldn't do this on TV because my people aren't ready for it yet. This has been a calculated effort to out the New Age, New Gospel, what they're calling the New Spirituality, but it is the New Age just wrapped in new terminology. So that was, you know, at the end of last year that was really being popularized. And then, this was especially hard for me to, to grasp, on January 1st of this year, on her XM Satellite Radio program, Oprah had her longtime friend, the woman that she made famous, because Marianne Williamson had a book about A Course in Miracles. And Marianne Williamson started teaching A Course in Miracles daily on XM Satellite Radio for an hour, and I think it's repeated of sometimes as much as three times a day, daily throughout the year. There are 365 lessons from this Course in Miracles. Now, that doesn't mean much to most listeners if they're not familiar with A Course in Miracles. I was because I did A Course in Miracles when I was in the New Age. And The Course in Miracles is absolutely the Bible turned upside down. Well, now, Warren, what kind of a uh, response has Oprah gotten with all of this religious material that she's been pushing? I mean, is she uh, really very popular now? Do people just eat this kind of thing up hook, line, and sinker? Or is there anyone who is discerning about what she's doing? Millions of people, the most recent thing that she's done is an Internet class that she is actually co-teaching with Eckhart Tolle, another New Age teacher. And she's offered his book, A New Earth, Awakening to Your Life's Purpose. And she's offering that as her 61st Oprah Book Club selection. And it is absolutely, it's really the New Age encapsulized. And she's doing a 10-week class on the Internet. They started on March 3rd. 
So the this class with Eckhart Tolle is really the New Age uh, in summary, as I said, and it's, it's kind of like a Cliff's Notes to the Course in Miracles. Let's just step back for a second. Let's look at the Course in Miracles, because this is what Eckhart Tolle is teaching, too, in just a different kind of shorter form. The Course in Miracles that Marianne Williamson is, is teaching daily on Oprah XM Satellite Radio is reputedly, the Course in Miracles is reputedly from Jesus. The Jesus that they're talking about, though, is another Jesus. It's the one that the Apostle Paul warned about in 2 Corinthians 11 when he said to the, he chided the Corinthians and said, you know, if another Jesus comes through here with another gospel, another spirit, you might just go for it. And that's exactly what's happening. Jesus warned himself about false Christs that would come in his name. So this Jesus that, that appeared in 1965 as an inner voice in a, to a psychologist in New York City by the name of Helen Schuchman, that this is A Course in Miracles, Please Take Notes. Shukman, this Columbia Hospital psych, uh, University Hospital psychologist, was stunned. She heard this inner voice, and she took this dictation down, and she took it down, Larry, for seven years. This Jesus delivered these teachings. I'm now quoting from the Jesus of A Course in Miracles. The recognition of God is the recognition of yourself. Is Jesus the Christ? Oh, yes, along with you. Do not make the pathetic error of clinging to the old rugged cross. Here's another one. I mean, I'm sorry, these are, I mean, this is pure blasphemy, but this is what is being piped over Oprah's huge media. All, I mean, she's got about four different ways she's coming at people with her magazine, her TV show, her radio show, and on the Internet. Next year, she's going to have OWN, O-W-N, Oprah Winfrey Network, that's going full-time on television. You can expect to see this stuff just being pumped out pretty much full-time. It's been a kind of an exponential jump in uh, this last, uh, particularly this last eight or nine months, where she's really pushing this whole idea that we are all God, we are all Christ. Here's another one from the, the Jesus, quote-unquote, Jesus of A Course in Miracles. The journey to the cross should be the last useless journey. Uh, the crucifixion did not establish the atonement. The resurrection did. The song of Easter, listen to this. We just, we just, I mean, her show with uh, Eckhart Tolle overlapped with Easter. Here's what the Jesus of A Course in Miracles says about Easter. The song of Easter is the glad refrain, the Son of God was never crucified. And then just one last one. The, the atonement is the final lesson that man need learn, for it teaches him that never having sinned, he has no need of salvation. And then they go on. There's no sin. There's no devil. You're not persecuted, nor was I. It's hard to believe, Larry, that at one time, for two years, weekly at night, I met in a Course in Miracles study group. It's equally hard to understand how Course in Miracles groups were meeting on the Crystal Cathedral campus in the mid-1980s, and that callers were being referred to the Miracle Distribution Center to buy the Course in Miracles. Robert Schuller was involved with this. Robert Schuller had Gerald Jampolsky, the man who introduced me to A Course in Miracles through his book, Love is Letting Go of Fear. Schuller had him on his program not only in the early 1980s, Schuller had him on his program in October of 2004. Robert Schuller's present book, um, that, it, that his most recent book, Don't Throw Away Tomorrow, Living God's Dream for Your Life, has Gerald Jampolsky's uh, endorsement on the back of his book. Robert Schuller just recently had a rethink conference with many so-called Christian leaders that were at this conference. It's unbelievable. Robert Schuller has actually been called by New Age leaders the type of man who can make the bridge between the church and the New Age, and Schuller's been doing that for years. I'm not trying to pick on Robert Schuller, but you can imagine, Larry, for me, someone who was in the New Age, who did A Course in Miracles, who recognized the deception by the grace of God and got out of it, to realize that Robert Schuller had Course in Miracles groups meeting on the Crystal Cathedral campus the same time that he had Christian pastors and leaders coming and taking his, you know, his course on how to have a bigger church and how to have um, successful ministry. It's it's truly unbelievable. So this has been this is really widespread, and this Course in Miracles is literally being taught by Marianne Williamson as a new world view, as a way to save the world from the terrorism and the uh, absolute um, destruction that faces the world right now. They're saying that this is the way that we need to get out of our present situation. We need to adopt this understanding that we are all Christ, that we are all God, because we are all one. 
and you know i'm sure as a guy who teaches the bible all the time larry you know genesis 11 you know the tower of babel i mean what was the deal there it was like god was not impressed with oneness when the people were one and they started to adopt the same spiritual language all this overlapping language he scattered them and threw them down and he you know the even the, the word imagine was even used and that word imagine is being used throughout the new age and even the church you know imagine what you want and then create it that's the secret um, create your own reality by recognizing that you're God and that you're Christ. And that's what's happening with the Internet class, too. So this whole thing um, has been going on for years. Um, unbelievably, when I was writing my book, Exposing A Course in Miracles and Exposing the New Age, back in 1992, we were editing the book through Moody Press in Chicago in 1992. And uh, right at the time my book was being edited, Oprah Winfrey had Marianne Williamson on her program, and on that program, uh, The Course in Miracles was outed. The False Christ of A Course in Miracles was outed. Of course, they didn't say that. But what Oprah said about Marianne Williamson and A Course in Miracles, I'm quoting right now from that 1992 show. Oprah Winfrey said about Marianne, of course, a leader in a philosophy that I personally know could change the world. I believe that with all my heart. I've read many books over the years. I've never been as moved by a book as I have by Marianne Williamson's book, A Return to Love, Reflections on the Principles of the Course of Miracles. So moved, in fact, that I went out and bought a thousand copies and will be giving you all a copy before you leave here today. If it sounds like I'm trying to hype the book, I really am. It's the first time you can open a book and actually see some answers. Larry, I just read those answers, and they are absolute blasphemy. They for starters, you know, the very first commandment is you shall have no other gods before me. We're now being told that we are all God and we are all Christ. When when you were a kid, Larry, did you ever, like, when I was a kid, you know, we'd, we'd play, like, baseball, and somebody get upset and get authoritative, and somebody else would say, hey, who do you think you are, God? And we'd quickly say, no, no. Now it's almost the opposite. If you're not if you're not saying that you are God, you're being looked upon by the New Age teachers like Oprah and Eckhart Tolle and the rest of them as part of the forces of darkness that are opposing this new spirituality, this new age, this this new uh, I, these new ideas that will help to change the world and bring world peace. And of course, the prophet Daniel warned about Antichrist. He said, you know, by peace he shall destroy many, and Really interestingly, he said in the King James, he said that the destruction would come wonderfully. It will be a wonderful destruction. What do people say about Oprah? She's wonderful. Prophet Jeremiah said a wonderful and a horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and my people love to have it so. This is a wonderful and a horrible thing that's happening. It looks wonderful, but it's actually horrible. And it's sad because, you know, Oprah Winfrey does so many really good things, and I think she's truly loved by so many people that they unfortunately assume that what she believes and what she's teaching has to be good because they, they, they perceive her as being such a wise person. But the Bible warns about those who are wise and make the wise foolish and the foolish wise. So we have a real interesting situation, but it's, it's stepped up, and I think you know believers need to understand that we're living in a very very perilous time where the Bible is being turned upside down, and those of us who resist these new teachings are being perceived as the adversary and as the enemy. Right. In First Thessalonians 5, 6, the apostle says, Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. And we certainly need to watch and be sober. Well, friends, we're visiting with Warren Smith. He is a former New Ager. He's now a Christian believer, firmly rooted and grounded in the Word of God. He's an author. And uh, he's giving us some tremendous insights into Oprah Winfrey's religious leanings. And she's certainly leaning in the wrong direction. You know, uh, Warren, she identifies herself as a Christian, but she says that uh, when she was a young woman, she was disturbed by a pastor's declaration that the God of the Bible is a jealous God. She says, something about that didn't feel right in my spirit because I believe that God is love and that God is in all things, close quotes. That's what she told her television audience. And so um, that's when she says, the search for something more than doctrine started to stir within me. And there we have it, that casting away of Bible doctrine, some sense that there's got to be some inner light, some inner reality, which is going to lead us into all truth. And of course, 
what they regard as that inner light is really the forces of darkness leading them, and then because they are so popular, such as Oprah, she leads countless multitudes astray. So you're absolutely right how far this has gone, and yet so few people are aware of what is happening. Yeah, it's really sad. I talked to a woman who does broadcasting in Florida, and she said that she was watching Fox News and that uh, that one of the broadcasters on Fox News was doing a favorable uh, review of A New Earth uh, by Eckhart Tolle. And uh, I think a lot of people think that uh, Fox is conservative and that they would never go in that direction. But it just shows you, you, you have to really, really watch who you're listening to. And the thing that's amazing is that God gave us his word so that we would be prepared. He told, he told in Matthew 24, he said, Behold, I have told you before. I've told you ahead of time. He didn't tell us these things to scare us. He told us these things so that we would be alert and aware and we would be able to defend the gospel when it comes under attack as it is right now. And you and I have talked about Neil Donald Walsh. He's a New Age leader. He and Marianne Williamson formed the Global Renaissance Alliance of New Age Leaders back in the late 1990s. And they all banded together. And they're, they're very much set on, on getting this whole doctrine, this whole philosophy put forward. But they say that they're not into belief. They're just into experience. But they're teaching the belief that we're all God and that we're all Christ. Listen, listen to what Neil Donald Walsh, what his uh, God said uh, about, this is his God, not just Neil Donald Walsh, about those of us who take exception to what is happening. Quote, but this paradigm shift will take great wisdom, great courage, and massive determination, for fear will strike at the heart of these concepts and call them false. Fear will eat at the core of these magnificent truths and make them appear hollow. Fear will distort, disdain, destroy. And so fear will be your greatest enemy. Larry, this is really backward, but the New Age definition of fear of God are those of us who have the fear of not believing that we are God. So when he says fear will be your greatest enemy, it's those of us who are refusing to believe that we are God or that we are Christ. Alice Bailey, way back, the matriarch of the New Age movement, addressing the church and those of us who will not go along with this, said, quote, the forces of darkness are powerful energies. They consequently block deliberately the inflow of that which is new and life-giving. They work to prevent the understanding of that which is of the new age. They endeavor to preserve that which is familiar and old to counteract the effects of the oncoming culture and civilization, to bring blindness to the peoples, and to feed steadily the existing fires of hate, of separateness, of criticism, of cruelty. It's all there. It's all in writing. And when, they, when she says separateness, that's when you don't believe that you're one with God, then you believe in separation. You don't believe that you're God, you're into separateness. And what they say is that it's hateful to not believe that your brother is God. So there's going to be new definitions of hate that are going to be coming forward, and especially in this political climate where there's so much talk about change, we have to define what people mean by change. And there's been a tremendous amount of change in the church, and a lot of that change is heading right into the spiritual trap because, unfortunately, a lot of church leaders are not warning about what's going on. They're, they're actually minimizing and downplaying what Oprah and others are doing. Those of us who are involved in the New Age know how serious they are. And, and just the fact that Oprah is now teaching this on the Internet and on XM Satellite Radio, and she's going to have her own, own OWN network on television, believers really need to know what's going on. In 2 Corinthians 2.11, uh, lest Satan get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Well, these are devices, and pastors and church figures, church leaders need to be letting their people know what's going on. We don't have to read all their books. We don't have to spend a lot of time doing it, but we better know what's going on. It's also, Larry, a tremendous opportunity for believers to witness to their deceived neighbors, friends, co-workers, family. I mean, there's a window that's here. When I bought Eckhart Tolle's book, The Power of Now, which was his previous book to A New Earth, I was at Barnes & Noble. And the guy that was cashing me out, he said, "Oh yeah, that's a great book." I said, "Really?" I said, "Do you think you're?" I said, "Do you think you're God?" He went, "Oh no, no, I don't think I'm God." I said, "Well, then you probably shouldn't recommend the book because that's pretty much the theme of the whole book." He said, "Well, I didn't know that. I have to take a closer look." I said, "That'd be a good idea. We can do little things like that that will help, you know, open a conversation." 
Well, you know, Warren, we try to get people into the Bible to study the Bible, but Oprah and other people like her, she's trying to get them out of the Bible because she claims that, you know, the Bible is a box, and uh, if we just seek to find God in the Bible, uh, then we're limiting God. In fact, she told her audience a while back that she has no problem reconciling the uh, differences between the New Age religion that she's now promoting and the Christian faith. And she says, you know, I reconciled it because I was able to open my mind about um, the absolute indescribable hugeness of that which we call God, she said. And, and then she added, I took God out of the box. So when you and I are talking about Christian doctrine, about the necessity of going to the Bible, she's kind of cr- critiquing that and saying that God is too big to fit in the box of Scripture. And yet we know that that's the lie that goes back to the garden because God's revelation is reliable. It's true. And once we get away from God's revelation, then we're using our fallen imagination. And that's where the danger comes in. That's exactly right. You know, Larry, I I, I thought outside the box when I was in the New Age, and I went so far out there. I mean, I was working with channelers, psychics, reading A Course in Miracles. The reason, this whole thing about thinking outside the box is getting to be a real common saying, but I think God gives us doctrine so that there are restraints. We need to... We need to stay within certain boundaries. Once we go over those boundaries and over those borders, we're heading into you know this new spirituality, this new age. I think that uh, that was such a, a, a mind blower for me when I saw that the that doctrine had a place. It's so easy to use the word dogma. They throw the word dogma out. Eckhart Tolle does that in particular. It talks about dogma. Hey, you know what? That that doctrine and that dogma is what what helps us to see this deception that's going on. And when Jesus said in Matthew 24, when he said, Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And then the, the most amazing one to me was when his disciples said, Tell us, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, or woman, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Absolutely. Well, Warren, we need you to come back for another program because we're just getting into the really relevant and highly important issues. We want to talk about Eckhart Tolle and his book, A New Earth. And so uh, can you be with us for another program? I'd be glad to. Well, friends, uh, we've been visiting with Warren Smith, and now our announcer, Brother Jerry, will come to the mic and give you the information about our special offer for each and every listener. I'll be happy to do that, Brother Larry. Get Warren Smith's book, The Light That Was Dark. Thank you, Brother Jerry. It is very insidious and has crept into many churches, and there are countless millions of people who think New Age truth is the gospel truth, and it certainly is not. Warren, as we begin our program today, you know, there was this caller who asked Oprah about reconciling the differences and the tensions between her New Age religion and her Christian roots, put that in quotes, and she claimed, I reconciled it because I was able to open my mind about the absolute indescribable hugeness of that which we call God, and Oprah said, I took God out of the box. Now, certainly... You know, we can have freedom, but there must be freedom within boundaries. If we get out of the box, for example, I think you were using the illustration, if we've got puppies, we put puppies in a box. Why? To protect them. And yet Oprah has no concept of that at all, and those who aren't into a New Age religion, they have no concept of that at all as well. Yeah, this was actually interesting. We're talking now about the Internet class that Oprah Winfrey is teaching with New Age teacher Eckhart Tolle. started on March 3rd, every Monday night for 10 weeks. It ran right through Easter. I don't think that was well planned. This class is teaching New Age principles, and this is a switch for Oprah. She's usually popularized and endorsed New Age books, New Age teachers, no doubt about that. But now she's actually teaching them herself, which really puts her in the role of being one of our perhaps most beloved, you know, false prophets. I mean, she's so well-liked, but she's teaching things that are absolutely the opposite of Scripture. I think a lot of Christians are being challenged right now. It kind of reminds me, Larry, of, you know, the uh, seed that was put on the stony ground where people, 
you know, the analogy that was made was that there was a joy in the Lord, but that the roots didn't go very deep. And it said that in times of tribulation, affliction, and in Luke, temptation fell away. And this is what's going on. I really believe that a lot of Christians are being challenged right now. You know, do you really believe the Bible? Do you really believe what you were brought up to believe? You know, how strong is your faith? Or do you want to go for this New Age temptation? The caller, which was right at the, you know, the very first show, the very first caller, I thought it was interesting, kind of raises this question, and I'll just read what the caller said. She said, well, my question is regarding religion and spirituality. In reading books such as Tolley's, it's really opened my eyes up to a new way of thinking, a new form of spirituality, it's not new, that doesn't always align with the teachings of Christianity. So my question to you, Oprah, how have you reconciled these spiritual teachings with your Christian beliefs? And then you said the part of the thing where she said, I reconciled it because I was able to open my mind about the absolute indescribable hugeness of that which we call God. I took God out of the box. Well, she goes on to say, Oprah says, and you know, it's been a journey to get to the place where I understand that what I believe is that Jesus came to show us Christ consciousness. I'm just going to interrupt right there. Christ consciousness, when I was in the New Age, I mean, Christ consciousness is we are all Christ. We go within, and this is what Tolley teaches, you awaken, quote-unquote awaken, and shift to this belief that deep inside yourself you are really God, you are really divine, you are Christ. And there's a collective Christ consciousness. All of the world is collectively united through this Christ principle. And it's absolutely blasphemous. I believed it for a long time. I can't really, can't really you know, ridicule anybody that accepts that belief because I went so deeply into it myself. The human flesh is wanting to believe at a deep level that we're really fine, that everything's great, we just need to affirm that. But really what's interesting is that Eckhart Tolle in this class, in his book, A New Earth, says that the ego, the ego is kind of like the old man, there's a lot of insight that's laid out about the way that the old man or the ego operates, that brings a lot of people into the camp. But then he says you have to shift and awaken to the deeper part of yourself that's Christ. But Larry, what is the ultimate ego trip? To believe that you're God. And that's part of the, the, the amazing deception of this thing, is that people think that there's a Christ consciousness within them, but they're really just going to a deeper level of their own deception and believing that we're God. So then Oprah goes on and she says, this is very important, as I said earlier in the pre-show here, there was a wonderful book called Discover the Power Within You by Eric Butterworth, which helped me reconcile the two, that is, you know, Christianity and these new beliefs so that it might be a really good for those of you who are Christian and trying to balance the two. Well, I couldn't believe it when I heard that. I mean, she's not even being subtle anymore because Eric Butterworth is a unity minister. He passed away in 2003. And on his own website, if you go to ericbutterworth.com, on that Eric Butterworth Foundation website, he is described... Well, here's what it says. Eric Butterworth was a senior minister from the Unity Center of New York from 1961 to 2003. Eric was considered a legend and a spiritual icon in the Unity movement, the author of 16 best-selling books on metaphysical spirituality, a gifted theologian, a philosopher, and lecturer. Eric was a highly respected New Age pioneer and the innovator of new thought. I mean, there it is right there. Oprah and Eckhart are trying to call what they're doing the new spirituality. I've noticed that this term, the new spirituality, has crept into the church. They're talking about a new spirituality, but not differentiating. It's getting very confusing, a lot of overlapping language. But what's really amazing is that in 1987, September 18th, 1987, Oprah Winfrey had a show on television, on her Oprah Winfrey show, on the New Age movement. Now, do you remember Marilyn Ferguson, the Aquarian Conspiracy? What was the basic bottom line of that? The basic bottom line of that was that there was a new movement that was taking root, and Ferguson said that there was a great heretical idea. She said, usually at the point of crisis, this is a quote from her book, usually at the point of crisis, someone has a great heretical idea. A powerful new insight explains the apparent contradictions. It introduces a new principle, a new perspective. Given the superior power and scope of the new idea, we might expect it to prevail rather quickly, but that almost never happens. The problem is that you can't embrace the new paradigm unless you let go of the old. 
Then she says, if these discoveries of transformation are to become our common heritage for the first time in history, they must be widely communicated. They must become our new consensus, what everybody knows. Well, she's sitting on Oprah in 1987 as the author of what Oprah is describing as the Bible of the New Age movement. And on that show, uh, Oprah Winfrey says, this is back in 1987, one of the most important books I think I've read in my life was a book by Eric Butterworth called Discover the Power Within You. And what Eric Butterworth said in that book is that Jesus did not come to teach how divine he was, but he came to teach us there is divinity within us. So that is essentially what we're talking about. Then one of her guests, a New Age minister, turns to Oprah and says, that's a summary statement of exactly where we are in what we call the New Age or New Thought. So Oprah defined the New Age movement on her own program about the New Age movement, talking about Eric Butterworth in 1987. Marilyn Ferguson, one of her guests, says, you know what, we have a great heretical idea, but it takes time and it needs to be widely communicated. So 20 years later, after all of these authors that have been endorsed and popularized by Oprah, Oprah is now talking about Butterworth again, but it's a blitz. In basketball, it's a full-court press. It's in their face. This is coming on strong. They really believe that they've made the paradigm shift, and they're going for it. Now, later in that same program in 1987, this Dr. Curtis says, well, I'm sure it's happening because, as you said in the introduction, that the New Age or the New Thought religions are very much in line with traditional religion. Well, that's what Oprah just said on this program in Reconciling the Faith. He said, I think it's a dimension that comes when we're aware of the awakening in consciousness, the shift, the new paradigms of thought, and all of the awakening of that divine self and individuals. It's all the terminology that Eckhart Tolle is using in his book, and this was 20 years ago. I mean, this people thought the New Age went away. Larry, those of us that were in it, we knew that not only was it not going away, it's been growing by leaps and bounds. And yet we have pastors who minimize the New Age, who call it, Silliness. This is not silliness. I think the image that a lot of uh, pastors and a lot of Christians have is Shirley MacLaine running down the beach, you know, back in, in her movie, Out on a Limb on television, shouting, I am God, I am God. And everybody laughed and said, how silly, how stupid. Well, Shirley MacLaine was kind of the front person for this movement. She outed it, and she took a lot of ridicule for doing it, but it's just grown and grown. And now we have a man, Eckhart Tolle who's written several best-selling books. This book, A New Earth, is everywhere. It's, it's a number one bestseller. I went out to eat with my, with my wife for lunch one day. The pickup truck next to me had a copy on the, on the seat. Um, the bookstores have them stacked high in, you know, in, in, in various places in the bookstore. His other books are at the checkout. He's got a book called Stillness Speaks, and yet we have a whole Christian movement where they're talking about contemplative prayer and going into stillness, the stillness takes you to that place deep within yourself where they're saying that Christ is in yourself. And there's no differentiation being made. And so what's so interesting is that this Eric Butterworth, with his book Discover the Power Within, is now being held up by Oprah as something that can help you reconcile your Christian faith. Let me just give three quick quotes from Eric Butterworth's book that Oprah's recommending. By the way, over 100 times, Eric Butterworth in that book refers to the divinity of man. So here's a quote from that book that Oprah recommended. This basic principle, the divinity of man, is the dynamism of Christianity that can save the world and lead mankind to a new level of peace on earth, goodwill toward men. That's what we're looking at right now. This whole New Age movement that's being presented in the, term, in, in the name of the new spirituality, Oprah said, on, on her program, on that first program, she basically said, if we don't make this shift, okay, the shift to what? The shift to Christ consciousness, the Christ within. If we don't make this shift, the world is really going to be in trouble. Now, Larry, what is going to happen down the line if this continues? If Christian leaders don't stand up and really articulate what's going on and warn people and make a stand and, and contend for the faith, what's going to happen is that um, we, as Christians, are going to be blamed for interfering with world peace because we're not going along with oneness and unity in the name of the Christ and the God that's within all people. Okay, here's another quote from Eric Butterworth's book that Oprah recommended. The great sin of mankind is not to know the divinity that lies unexpressed within every individual. This one really knocked me out at the very end of Butterworth's book. Here's the quote. Namaskar. Behold yourself in a mirror and say, Namaskar. 
I salute the divinity in you, and then go out and act the part. That gives a little bit of new meaning to you shall have no other gods before me. You stand before the mirror and declare yourself to be God and then go out and proclaim that to everybody and quote Eckhart Tolle, and that's your New Age, new spirituality. And it's creeping into the church. There are all sorts of overlapping crossover terms that are creeping into pastors' messages and books and everything else. In the first interview, you you quoted these words, you are God in a physical body, close quotes. And then I was thinking of Genesis 3, verses 4 and 5, where it says, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, directly contradicting God's revealed word. And then verse 5, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as God's knowing good and evil. So the idea that we have here is that the revelation of God is directed to not exalt us, but to exalt God. And God really has an evil intent and purpose at heart. Rather than his wanting us to be free and to realize the inner light and our full potential, God is trying to hold us back. So we've got to break out of the chains. We've got to get out of the box. We've got to realize who we really are, and God doesn't want us to know that because he's basically evil at heart. So this whole New Age occultic thing that we have on Oprah Winfrey and Eric Tolley and all of these others, Eric Butterworth, is about as old as Genesis chapter 3, and yet everybody thinks it's some kind of new liberalizing idea that's freeing us and making us all that we're supposed to be. It's, it's the same old lie that's been around for thousands of years. It is, Larry. And, you know, you said something really interesting about who you really are. This is a phrase that's being put out there a lot. The New Age is saying you don't know who you truly are. And what that means is you don't understand that you're divine, that you're God. And you need to be able to see in a new way. Ferguson talked about that. There's a new way of seeing. And that new way of seeing is by shifting your consciousness into this deeper part of yourself and just recognizing that you're God. And Eckhart Tolle is saying, you don't have to believe anything. You just need to have this shift in consciousness. And he's saying that the shift in consciousness can come from just reading his book. And I want to tell you something. I was involved in the New Age. This is an occult book. When you read occult books, you can have supernatural experiences that are definitely from the other side. And they can make you think that what you're doing is really good. Half the stuff I got involved in, when I read A Course in Miracles, when when my wife and I finished reading it, we were high on a mountain in Yosemite National Park, and it was an exhilarating experience. We felt wonderful. After we learned what a lie it was and we became believers, we could then feel the evil that was literally coming from the book. I mean, we would get oppressed reading the book. I was on a a television program uh, years ago, and the man interviewing me, Ben Kinchlow, held the Course in Miracles up to the camera. This is back in 1993. He said, people, I can feel the evil in this book. Of course you can, because the Course in Miracles says that we're all God, we're all Christ, the recognition of God is the recognition of yourself. Eckhart Tolle's class that he's doing with Oprah Winfrey is simply a condensed, Cliff's Notes, fast food spirituality version of the New Age movement. Um, I'm going to give just a couple of quotes from uh, his book, uh, A New Earth. The book's, this book's main purpose is not to add new information or beliefs to your mind. Well, that's not true. They're telling you that you're God. That's a belief. Or to try to convince you of anything, but to bring about a shift in consciousness, that is to say, awaken. You know, we hear a lot of talk in the church right now. There, there are actually Christian leaders who are talking about how the church and the world is on the verge of a great awakening. Man, you know, this reminds me of when Jesus said, you know, to the Pharisees, you can see the, the sky and you can see the weather, but you don't see the signs of the times. I mean, it's unbelievable. They're, they're talking, the church is talking about a great awakening. The great awakening will happen only if the New Age is exposed and people understand the truth and accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Tolley says it will only change your state of consciousness or it will be meaningless. It can only awaken those who are ready. Catch the intimidation there? It can only awaken those who are ready. Not everyone is ready yet, but many are. And with each person who awakens, the momentum in the collective consciousness grows, and it becomes easier for others. Larry, you know, I think the best way to explain this, remember the story, the Hans Christian Andersen fairy tale of the emperor's new clothes? The king's advisor, the emperor's advisors were told that the king had this magic suit of clothes that had been sold to them by these swindlers. And the swindler said that only wise and well-informed people would see this magic suit of clothes. 
So, of course, the king's advisors, not wanting to appear foolish or unwise, saw this magic suit of clothes and convinced the king or the emperor that he had this magic suit of clothes. Then the word went out into the whole kingdom, and everybody saw this magic suit of clothes. They were told what they were supposed to see, even though it wasn't there. And then one little boy said, hey, wait a minute, and he hadn't been told what he was supposed to see. He said, wait a minute, the king's naked. He doesn't have, he doesn't have any clothes on at all. And everybody kind of went, wow, that's actually true. So I really believe that what we have here is with Oprah and her, her belovedness is she's telling everybody what they're supposed to see, and if they don't see it, there's something wrong with them. That's the implication. And more than that, that world peace in the future may depend upon everybody accepting this new world view. Marianne Williamson said at the beginning of the year that she was going to teach a course in a new world view that would shift your past or old world view, spell that biblical Christianity, into this new world view that says that we're all God and we're all Christ. Larry, 2 Timothy 4, 3, as you well know, says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn their ears away from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. It will have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, turn away from that, from such turn away. And then interestingly, in 2 Timothy also, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Namaskar, stand in front of the mirror and salute the divinity that you're looking at. If that isn't loving yourself, I actually talked to a pastor. He said, that's just unbelievable. He said, you salute the divinity within you and you, and you love God, you know, that you're looking at yourself, and then you go out and love your neighbors as you love yourself as God. If that isn't backward, if that isn't Isaiah saying there'll come a day when they call evil good and good evil, you know, I don't know, I don't know what. It's, it's, if it wasn't so incredibly insidious, it would almost be laughable, but it's not, and it cannot be made fun of, and this is no joke. Well, Warren, doesn't that take us back to the 60s? John Lennon wrote a very famous song. I think it was Imagine. Imagine, yeah. Right. Uh, Imagine there's no heaven. Uh, It's easy if you try. Heaven is not a location. You know, the idea that it refers to some interstate and so forth. So this has been around for a long time, but... At one time, it was only on the the fringes of society, like the young people and the rock stars and so forth. But now we've got uh, major TV uh, and television personalities like Oprah and other people who are endorsing it, and the whole society is just absorbing it like a sponge. And if this is not the end times apostasy that the Bible is speaking about, I really don't know what is. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. And, you know, what you're referring to with the John Lennon song, there's a website, Barrett Chos, she spells her last name K-J-O-S, and she has a, an article that uh, actually conveys that whole song and how it converts to what they're talking about today. I've just written a very long article. It's been broken into four parts. We've posted three of them so far at Heroscope, H-E-R-E-S-C-O-P-E dot com, on the subject of Eckhart Tolle and Oprah Winfrey. And the reason that I did that and the reason that you know, we're doing this on, on the radio right now, is because people need to understand. They, they, again, 2 Corinthians 2.11, we're not ignorant of our enemies' devices, but the church is largely ignorant because, I'm sorry, but church leaders are leading people into a feeling that there's some kind of wonderful thing happening in the church. And maybe there are some good things happening in the church, but, you know, this great awakening and this shift in consciousness that Eckhart Tolle and Oprah are talking about, meanwhile, there are groups... Willow Creek is having a shift conference, and uh, Brian McLaren's going to be speaking there. And we're using the same terms, overlapping. And it's, it's very dangerous to say that God is in everyone, and everything is a very, very deceptive way of presenting some of the scriptures. We have to be very careful in what we're saying. We need to be careful that we're not overlapping with this New Age stuff. Well, you're absolutely right. Warren, we thank you so much for your insights. It's always a great delight and great blessing to interview you, and I know our listeners will grow, and hopefully they'll become very discerning. So thank you so very much, and may the Lord continue to bless you. Thank you, Larry. Brother Jerry, come to the mic, and once again let our listeners know how they may obtain this special offer that we're offering to our listeners. Thanks, Brother Larry. We're offering Brother Warren's book about his days as a New Ager and how he came to discover the error of his way. The 168-page book is entitled, The Light That Was Dark, with a subtitle of From the New Age to Amazing Grace. 
We're making the book available for a gift of $20 for one copy. But you may want another to share with a friend who's caught up in the New Age movement. If so, get two for a gift of $35. To get the book or books, call 1-800-652-1144. Write to Southwest Radio Ministries, Post Office Box 100, Bethany, Oklahoma, 73008. Or visit our website at swrc.com. The two programs with Brother Warren are also available. Get them on tape or CD for a gift of $13. Don't miss getting your copy or copies of The Light That Was Dark, one for a gift of $20, two in appreciation of your $35 contribution. Phone 1-800-652-1144. Write to Southwest Radio at Box 100, Bethany, Oklahoma, 73008. Or go online. The web address is swrc.com. As you know, we're celebrating 75 years of ministry here at Southwest Radio. And so, on tomorrow's broadcast, you'll hear a message from the founder, Dr. E.F. Weber. It was first presented more than 50 years ago, yet it's still a stirring message. Don't miss hearing it. And don't miss getting Warren Smith's book, The Light That Was Dark. Call, write, or go on the web today. Tune in tomorrow for your Watchman on the Wall program, a presentation of Southwest Radio Ministries. and fear